Welcome everyone to this Estonian episode of the Caravan Tour of Terror, a show that finds us touring the globe through the medium of horrific, chilling and disturbing entertainment. My name's Donald, I'm the driver on this quest. Joining me at my side, as always, with a road atlas on his lap and a delicious looking love potion for me to eat is my navigator Ali. Say hello, Ali. It's definitely not got my shit in. <laughs> that won't make sense if you haven't watched the movie. Now... Eagle-eared listeners may note that this isn't the stop we originally planned on making, as alluded to in our Fright Fest episode. We were planning on covering the film Sputnik, but with world events as they are, we decided it was best to rethink that plan. So that being said, we're visiting lovely Estonia, arguably the most technologically advanced country in Europe. Did you know that, Ali? Uh, I didn't. They've got like the Silicon Valley of Europe in Estonia. What does that mean? Like the most tech startups of anywhere in Europe is Estonia. And for a country that's so small, it's crazy. It's ridiculous. Okay. E- everyone's starting a tech company. <laughs> they've, okay. Got, okay. they've got like ID cards that they use for basically everything. It's like they're, everything's like contactless Wi-Fi in Estonia. It's nuts. It's cool. It's t- it's visit it's, Estonia. It's like where the old world meets the new. Estonia. I don't know. They should get me to write that kind of shit. So... We're in the Suma Canoeing and Sauna Center. You like sauna? sauna? You like sauna? Sauna. 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 You like getting steamy? Oh, saunas. We're, um, I, I take it we're preparing this for our uh, dead ancestors. No, 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 no. We're just enjoying a nice, just lovely... Just a regular sauna. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. There's no, no ghosts, all right? Okay. We're on the banks of the Nevesti River. We can Beautiful. appreciate the marshes, the rivers, the enjoyment offered by the sauna, and the company of friends, Ali. Sauna? <laughs> sauna? You're sticking with sauna? I don't know how okay. they say it, probably. I'm warm. It's warm in the sauna. We can enjoy delicious treats like blood dumpling and meat jelly. I blood, mean, <laughs> blood we're Scottish, we yeah. eat black pudding. That is, that is literally blood dumpling, literally. Yeah. It is. It sounds delicious. And meat jelly is just like... Meat jelly. The bones of, you know, it's it's gelatin from the bones and stuff yeah. like that. Uh, Terrible. The f- Estonian food has been described as hearty peasant food. And that's just the best kind of food, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's sounding like Scots and Estonians might have more in common than we realize. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, everyone loves a good blood pudding. Yeah. yeah. Blood pudding sounds like what an Estonian who has all right english would call black pudding yeah well it's it's called verikak obviously but you know yeah no but, but no but i'm sort. meaning just in the sense of <laughs> translating over yeah exactly, it's a blood exactly, dumpling it's exactly. a black pudding yeah, yeah cool I'm, yeah. I'm on board yeah 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 so we're here to watch november 2017 film directed by rainier sarney ali yes. would you like to That's tell usually. us a little bit Start us off a little something something about November. <laughs> it's uh it's it's one of those tough ones to describe, but I'll give it my best shot. November is a movie set in nine like nineteenth century. Yes, I because judging by the kind of like peasantry mixed with rich people. Listen, I had like to the in- rich. I had to internet. The rich that. people are know. living a fairly like modern life. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 <laughs> Whereas peasants are still peasants. Yeah. Like Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's set during that period in Estonia, but with like magic is real, yeah. but not magic, like Estonian folklore. magic. <laughs> like uh yeah. fol- folklore tales of like ghosts and yeah. like um Flying mechanical the devil. horse skulls. <laughs> it kind of there was there was genuinely a moment where I was like the world it's like supernatural. Like if mm. I'm going an easy comparison and I hate doing that, I love doing that, but I hate it's just in the terms of like everything's kind of real. Like everyone's all it's not weird that there are ghosts going around, it's just part of their daily lives that all this weird stuff exists. Yeah, but supernatural, and, it's still a secret. Maybe it is in this one village. You don't know. Nah. Nah. I'm not with you. Baron didn't know. I'm I'm not with you on it. I'm not with you on it. No. Okay. Um, <laughs> so 
it's it, everything's like out in the open um yeah it's just part of life yeah it's here just comes a procession of ghosts oh well, we've got to feed them now yeah it seems editating here's my honest. talking flying mechanical horse skull thing that needs a job so the thing is the, the movie opens with uh what is later described as a crat yeah and it's a horrifying little creature it is it's um, yeah it's a good bit of puppetry it is a, uh-huh it's a sheep skull with uh, uh, with three legs made of like sticks yeah. with a hatchet and two scythes on the ends yeah uh and it just rolls about yeah and it goes and steals a cow and that's literally the opening well no the opening shot is actually i've not even got to what this movie's about yet <laughs> Uh, the love story. opening shot is actually, I'm convinced, in colour. It is a lot of black and white imagery, it's, but, uh, but uh, natural yeah. black and white. I, um, like, it's a lot of snow, a lot of, mm. like, a bl- black and white wolf. Wolf? Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I am convinced that was in colour, but then the actual movie is in monochrome. Right. I see what you're saying. You think the opening shot was black and white for things shot in colour? Yes. I see. Yes. Do I believe you? I don't know. (laughs) Yes. I get it. And it creates a very, very stark opening picture. Mm -hmm. Very feral and bleak. Yeah. And then the story is of a young peasant girl. Mm Mm-hmm. Who lives a really shitty life with her dad. Lena, yeah, her dad's an asshole, yes. And their house is about, <laughs> the floor to ceiling is about five foot. So that yeah, l- looks like because, a pain in the ass. <laughs> uh, Yeah, it, it's the way the, the fire is yeah, like yeah. built into the floor. Yeah. And they're, li- they're basically just trying to get by and everyone's just kind of... Yeah out for themselves will fuck each other over for uh, the drop of a hat they're all starving yes uh and it's and it is november and it's coming up for winter Mm. um and it's not looking to be a good one and they've not got a lot of food and um Mm -hmm. so they uh because everything's real they do things like try and trick the devil by not signing in blood but signing in current juice like the story is her and this Lena. young Lena and uh, I, I falls Hans. in love with a <laughs> young boy named Hans who ends up working for a baron yeah. um, that lives nearby this peasant village that mm. some people in the village work for mm-hmm. uh, and the baron is German yeah. and they hate him yeah. and Hans is in love with the Baron's daughter Mm -hmm. and Lena is in love with Hans. Yeah. And that is kind of the plot. Yeah. I know that doesn't sound like it. That's the plot. That is the plot of the movie. Some things happen between (laughs) between those moments of, you know, you know, Lena and Hans gazing at each other. But generally that is kind of the whole that's movie. a central thing yeah it's a it's a romance with other things <laughs> bolted on it's an art movie ah it's art desk i would say it's an art movie it's we're, an art movie it's not an art movie we're already disagreeing it's not an art movie because it's got a plot that makes sense it's not an art movie it's artistic granted <laughs> It's an art house movie. It's not an art house movie. I don't think. I don't think so. I'd say it's artistically shot, but I'd say it's definitely not surreal. So I'd say it's fairly surreal. It's not surreal. I I disagree with you. I don't think it's surreal. I think what it is is it's a film about Estonian folklore that doesn't particularly give a shit if you've ever heard of Estonian folklore before. We've not. So the ent- the barrier to entry for us is particularly high. But even while watching the film, it all starts making sense. The opening shot of a crat 
turning into a helicopter, essentially, and dragging a cow away made me go, what the fuck is this? But later on, you'd learn that crats are, you know, bits of shit that the people can put together. And then they sign a deal with the devil at the crossroads, which is a familiar trope, to imbue with a soul. And then this thing is actually becomes kind of alive and it starts doing work. But, you know, they're kind of out for themselves. They're a little bit tricky. You know, that's not, you know. So by the end of it, we know the name of the thing. and It's not just shit happening for no reason. We know why it happens. But the barrier to entry is fucking high. <laughs> that's what I think. So that's why I don't think, I don't agree it's an art house movie. Because art house movies would have stuff that happens and it, doesn't particularly bother explaining it do you know what i mean it's just metaphor on screen but this had very little of that the only thing of this had that was metaphorical was the shots of there's a bit of jesus stuff in it <sighs> alarm jesus alarms ringing and then there's bits about him being like stabbed in the side and stuff and the blood flowing down because there's a weeb of artiness in that because it kind of Oh, God. Jesus gets... At one point, the statue of Jesus... <laughs> I'm just <laughs> jumping right ahead. There's no point. You can mention all kinds of things that happen in this film, and it doesn't make any fucking sense in out of context. But there's a bit where Jesus kind of bleeds, and then the blood kind of becomes like... It's kind of floating in like a pool of water, and that pool of water shot is out of no... It's not. There's no context for that shot. It's just purely like metaphor or whatever. But it actually gets called back later, so... And then when it's called back later, it actually does make a bit more sense, if you know what I mean. So I don't think it's art-esque. I don't even like our house movies. It's art-esque. It's not, I would not say it's art house. That, I'm, good night. <laughs> He's walked away now. I'm He's back. got out of the caravan. I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. It's, <laughs> I know, it's hard to follow up that, that rant. <laughs> It's not a rant. That was just my thought. It was definitely a rant. <laughs> uh, I, th I think the thing for me is that um, what pushes it more into the art house art category is that it cares more, way, way more about its themes and how it presents those both visually and throughout the the story than the story itself i'll disagree again i'll just say that the story isn't as good as the rest of it which isn't to, i'm not saying you're wrong what i'm saying is i don't think it's i'm i don't think that it's not caring about one more than the other i i think it's just the story's poorer than the rest of it i, I th but i feel there's poorer and there's barely there and this is like this is a string of events that happen in a village more than it is a story the the actual story is paper thin and it's not pa barely I mean, gets it's going not paper halfway thin. through the movie there's payoff like the stuff that happened there's there's moments that happen early on that get paid off much later so i wouldn't say it's paper thin it's not it's not like just things happening that's like I'm trying to think of things happening in movies that annoyed me like magnolia it's just a bunch of things happening that don't actually tie into each other this i'm does not have, saying they don't i'm not yeah i'm not but this does have there, there's more interweave it's more the interweavings of this town mm. and and however weird that may be mm than it is about any one thing and and that's why i'm saying like by it has a main character but by halfway through it's not even done anything because it because it's you you say that it, it doesn't care about um how much you know about um estonian folklore mm -hmm. but it does quite a lot in that first half to just hammer home exactly what Estonian folklore is. Yeah, but it doesn't explain it. Like, it doesn't hold your hand No, but it, it does visually. A lot of it. No, well, I don't agree. Because, I mean, when you saw the people in white walking through the forest, 
I mean, you might not have assumed that, oh, they're, they're actual ghosts. Oh, they eat dinner. Like, it doesn't like, if it wanted, it could have set that up a bit more. It could have had the annoying, you know, kind of, oh, you know, your mother, your ghost mother's going to come back tonight and we need but to I, cook this pork for her and, oh, get that. But I would also, uh, but, but I was, I would also say that that's just good world, like, you know, in, yeah, in many I horror totally movies. Agree. Uh-huh, like, yeah. what? Uh huh. It, it, it's good world building, and it's and it's well mm. laid out. And I've got no argument there. Like, yeah. no, it's it's what it what it wants to put across. It puts across very well, mm-hmm. uh, and full on in your face, but without being like, look, you fucking idiot. Like, it's 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 just presenting exactly what it what should be as what it should be like everyone acts naturally but there are ways to act naturally with while letting everyone else know like what's going on like the moment they appeared i knew they were ghosts Mm. not because i'm deep into my estonian folklore but because the way they set up those scenes i was like oh ghosts Oh, cool! The ghosts have arrived. <laughs> Not in the sense of I was expecting it, but like, oh look, it's ghosts. Oh, these ghosts are like, and then oh, they're sitting down for dinner. Yeah. Like, oh, cool! Like, I I wasn't like, no, come on, guys. Like, it mm. it's just that it was excellent world building, but it's and it goes on for a lot because it's it's reveling in its Estonia folklore more than anything. Well, it's hard. The thing is. It's hard to know that for sure, because if we were more familiar with these things, we wouldn't have that reaction. Do you know what I mean? Like, But there our... are plenty of movies within that, we, that, like, that we already know the background in that hammer home the lore behind them. Yeah, I know, but there's also films. I mean, we've watched two movies in the last two months that we are so familiar with the Dracula story that they can play with the trope of the Dracula story. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, and I, I don't know the answer to it, but an Estonian watching this might know what a crat is before they sit down and watch this film. Do you know what I mean? So it might open oh, yeah, up totally. and they're like, oh, a crat. <laughs> <laughs> they might, I mean, they the whole, the ghost eating dinner thing, that could just as easily have been totally made up by this film we have literally yeah, no point that's... of reference for yeah. it we have no point of reference for any of it but it's just an impression it gives at least that it is like you know it is just deep just lower all the way fucking down do you know what i mean i like obviously i don't know. know what yeah totally and I'm, I'm only going in what the the movie gave me as an impression mm. So the opening, the, the opening, the opening scene scene's is, great. Is that fucking the opening scene is great. Um, slap you across the face with this absolute weirdness. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> it, it, it is weird from the get go. Yeah. Um, for us, we'll have to fucking say for us a million times, but it's, it's no, I, I, I don't, I like. There are there are even less weird um, creatures. Mm-hmm crats specifically yeah. crats there are less oh, weird right. crats yeah. throughout the movie yeah. like i it, it's it definitely felt menacing like, and stuff uh-huh, yeah. it, it, a lot of this the tone of this movie to me felt quite uh like labyrinthy of it's labyrinth isn't a comedy but there are some funny moments and only in that it's obviously it wasn't like a kid's movie but just in the sense of that kind of how it how light it wants to go and how mm. serious it's a serious movie set in a fantasy world but it's got some light moments it took me ages to remember what labyrinth was <laughs> the, the orb the orb yeah i never the watched orb, it as a the kid. goblin king never watched it as a kid it's not not my thing not my thing so like that that, that and then it becomes a helicopter like yeah well, um, it, it flies yeah. and then it crashes into a tree <laughs> Like, you know, there is some humour there and there is more humour throughout the movie. Mm. Um, but then it also sets this bleak, horrible picture of like, poverty. oh, we've got nothing. Yeah, real We've poverty. got literally nothing. We, yeah, real we poverty. We eat real... <laughs> Like, not we can't yeah. afford a PlayStation. We are starving to death. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, 
park the bark in what was it sludge <laughs> I don't sludge. Well, maybe I think they say sludge, sludge at one point. Whether that's a direct <laughs> translation or sludge. whatever, like, <laughs> but the, it's, the the hammer home over and over just how like starving these people are. Mm. Yeah, and yeah, it's a. Uh, but then you've also got this like, like the devil is uh, the devil. The devil's a ridiculous. Appearance. Oh, he is over the top, amazing, ridiculous. The devil is the weirdest portrayal gurning. of the devil I've ever seen. I think he's gurning. He's like popping all over the. I don't even know how to describe it. It's he's a big fat slob that gurns all the time. Yeah, and he's our devil is either your besuited debonair evil roger moore type <laughs> yeah <laughs> or Al your Pacino. yeah yeah uh uh robert nero in a oh, what's it called fuck that one with uh mickey rook anyway angel eyes or something like that or he's your big fucking monster man you're yeah. big you're your wings big and horns, stuff dave yeah, Grohl in the yeah, tenacious yeah. d video he's not this weird fat guy with no physical it, boundaries it, it reminded me of like like Japanese kabuki theater kind mm. of like that kind of tone. Yeah. Like a lot of blowing out the cheeks and like yeah, yeah. just <sighs> yeah, uh-huh. yeah, 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 yeah. A mm-hmm. lot of like gurning with the lips. Mm. Like it was yeah, his fucking bottom lip basically goes over his nose. It's like yeah, uh-huh. and and it yeah. makes him like very mischievous, very. And I assumed like I that. assumed demon rather than actual lucifer but he actually do say later like the devil so oh, all yeah. right okay he is just the devil okay the devil at, yeah. yeah devil at the crossroads yeah 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 um I yeah, mean, anytime... yeah I mean, he's trickable as well which i mean i don't think i think our our kind of stuff now the demons uh, the devil's pretty the devil's not to be trifled with you would yeah you wouldn't sign no. a contract for the devil in black current juice or whatever it was no no. And for a bit of context, although oh, I'd say watch the film for God's sake, but for a bit of context, that's how crats get their souls. You have yeah. to you have to offer a soul and then another it's like trading. So you offer your soul and then a kind of other soul gets put into the crats and that soul does give them like wants and needs, just the need to work really. Well sometimes they turn murderous. Oh, they there's a their own like, needs. M- m- uh, the best scene in terms of humor for me was um the bicycle and it seat comes crat, at, is it what the bicycle seat crat yes yeah. the bicycle seat crat at, uh there's a very touching moment between two of the older characters where they talk about their past and mm. like just the pain that they've caused each other mm. but still have this kind of camaraderie mm. um old kind of flames and, and it's a very it's quite a touching moment of these two like kind of weird old people uh who have both not been perfect throughout the whole movie um no one's perfect that, in this film though to be fair no god no <laughs> they they don't have the the means to be because they're just trying to survive yeah. um but when these two are talking uh his crat just notices that they're having this moment <laughs> And then, like, goes out and closes the doors <laughs> behind him, just like, I'll give you a moment. And it's so good. Do you know what? See, the crats, they're done very fucking well. Excellent. Like, like, it, like to be able to imbue personality into these very fucking simple puppets is. And the whole point of feat. them is to be, like, they're simple because these people have nothing. They're literally yeah. made out of the bits and pieces they have lying around. Yeah, mm, exactly. Yeah, very um, well done yeah excellent um like that was genuinely a f- I, I like that made me laugh out yeah, loud yeah mm-hmm, uh mm-hmm. and i still enjoyed that scene like um like some of the people in this movie like are have been cast to look like you know poverty stricken <laughs> uh, or the makeup is fantastic like it's one of the two There's some rough looking people <laughs> yeah like genuinely there's a lot of noses that are 
squint as hell. <laughs> I don't know if you yeah. noticed it, but I'm a bit weird about noses that look like that. Even Stephen Fry's nose, if he talks about it too much, makes me feel, oh, because it's broken to hell and squint as fuck. But holy shit, these people have had some tough paper rounds, most of them. <laughs> um, and there's a witch in the movie. A uh, bitch, and yes. I say witch. She's but old as fuck, that lady. She is she so descri- old. She describes herself as an old hag. She's so old, by the way. Honestly, I was like, this is one of the oldest actresses in film, surely. It's like, it's like um, she could be the Chris- woman- Christopher Plummer's mum in uh, Knives Out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, it is exactly like that. Yeah. But way more capable. Yeah, way more um, capable. But also, just a slight hint of, you are all right, aren't you? You can sit down and have a cup of tea. You know, don't do all your lines at once here. Take care um, of yourself. But, I mean, I, I say witch, but she... Uh, so the, uh, Lena goes to her at one point uh, because Hans is besotted with the Baroness. Is she a Baroness? And... I'm only asking because I wrote in my notes Baroness and then I was like... I don't know if the daughter of a still alive baron makes her a baroness or if the it's his wife. The subtitles called it a baroness. Okay, fine. It. <laughs> okay. Her. her. That's fine then. That's fine. Because I must have got confused later on and been like, is she a baroness? Anyway, carry on. <laughs> yes. So uh, Hans is besotted with the baroness. So uh, Lena's, Lena goes to the witch and she says, how can I make Hans forget her? And the witch goes, kill her with this arrow and i was like that's not i, I mean it's that's not witchery arrow. it's a magical arrow uh, but a, a regular arrow would do the same thing <laughs> like that's not magic and then later she tells uh she tells um she, she tells one of the villagers who asks how to make someone fall in love with them she says cook your sweat your armpit hair and your shit into a Mix love it together cake. and yeah. feed it to her. Yeah, and he bakes it into a bread. Yeah, because he's an idiot. Because <laughs> they were I making know. fun of him there. <laughs> she never does magic though. <laughs> she never does witchery. <laughs> yeah, she could just be not... an old wise woman. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it might have worked, but unfortunately, when the shit got found, <laughs> that guy... Yeah, so that's a good moment, actually. So that guy cooks the shit cake, but then the butler, who looks like Paddy Considine, is like, that shit, by the way, so the woman doesn't eat it. He's got real Paddy Considine energy about him. So that guy goes away. He gets a wafer from the church, spits it out, fashions it into oh, a bullet, and man. shoots the statue of Christ, as you do, because uh, that will give her... That will imbue powers upon him. He then goes back with his new sight powers and then overpowers them both and, like, smother rapes her. Oh, it's horrible. It's horrible. But it's horrible. That whole bit, uh, that whole movement is bonkers. <laughs> but they do set it all up because they do explain what happens when you shoot the statue of Christ with yep. a wafer that you spit out. Oh, also, when the main character... Because they, this is a thing. A right, group. I wrote this down as well. So what, <laughs> what it is is right. They all have communion. They've got a grift no, Euchar- going. The, the, is it the Eucharist? They've got a grift. The body going. of the Christ. Yes. Uh, and it, it, no, it's not. A, so it's not a grift. It's like desperation. Oh no! I so mean, what it, I know. I mean, sorry. The the priest is completely subservient to all of them he's basically brainwashed that's what i meant yeah there's a there's a weird religious anti-religious theme that yeah. goes through the whole thing yeah um very odd uh but the so they so they all take the eucharist uh and they have the communion wafer and then they they go outside and they spit it out because the idea is that they put tinge their bullets with it so that hunting will be more successful mm. because they're that desperate yeah the body of christ bullets will not fail and when the main character <laughs> spits out her communion wafer onto this guy there's like, no a wafer them, <laughs> like most of the characters spit it out and it's like this soggy horrible cracker that falls yeah. out she just globs this big <laughs> mess onto his hand and it's this guy. and then he pretends to put something in his pocket there's zero way for that honestly it was horrible <laughs> it was, there's actually there's oh there's a scene and i god 
please, I hope that it was fake. The- there is a scene where a man eats a bar of soap Aye. like it is a delicacy. Yeah, that's very odd. In full. Yeah. Start to I'm finish. I'm sure it wasn't real soap, but it might have been. It's, uh, yeah, he's, that's a cool bit because he like, that's, that's your, that's your shit cake man right there. Because he, he's like in love with the, he's in love with the, not the butler, the maid um, of the, the Baron. And then he's one, and he, kind of breaks in he's wandering around the the kitchen and he just sees all this food and everything around him. he's like oh my god and it's kind of framed like the shots framed with like a white fuzz uh to kind of emphasize all the things he's looking at and out of everything he picks up the salt <laughs> just oh and then yeah chops down on that bad boy oh my god <laughs> the whole thing and then like Lex's fingers afterwards it's maybe it, it looked like soap maybe it, it was looked like, maybe maybe it wasn't but to both of us it looked like soap oh my god yeah oh my god <laughs> there's a lot of disturbing stuff in that movie um but the main I character Lena is the thing. a wolf walker in some fashion I wasn't I, sure if she was a werewolf or yeah, a war. Is that a warg? Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I also don't know. Cause but basically, as in, like, yeah. possessing a wolf. Yeah, because at first it suggests it's a werewolf, but then later on you kind of see her in tandem with Writhing wolf, on so the ground like, while yeah. the wolf is so, yeah, out So doing it looks shit. more like it probably is a warg doing kind of thing. Shit. Well, it's spying on Hans. <laughs> no, I know, but just the... And his dirty know. dick. <laughs> and his dirty, dirty... <laughs> Oh, poor Hans. <laughs> Hans gets a job with the Baron. Yep, which leads to everyone hating him because he starts oh, strutting around with a whip like he's Dwight from The Office. It's ridiculous. It's just, it's... <laughs> the fuck at you the, think you are? At the local forest burning. <laughs> I didn't know what they were doing. Um, um, and the Baron's portrayed as like kind of effete yeah uh, and and just completely ignores anything that goes on he sees all the yeah. horrible shit like mm-hmm. the, that they that they hate They're stealing him. from him all the and, time and the murders yeah. and he just ignores it all like at one point um ha- uh, he's walking th- through hans is walking through to steal something mm-hmm. And he's just playing piano. Yeah. Like there's a stranger, a strange peasant man walking yeah. through his house and he d- doesn't even blink. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, he literally sees the maid rifling through his wife's belongings because his wife was like bed bound and kind of. Comatose. Yeah. Yeah. And then he, and then he's like, and then he just wanders back out again. Let's have Yeah. I mean, the butler's taking a farting shit on his lawn and he doesn't care. So. Yeah. <laughs> Classy movie. <laughs> <laughs> So a bit I like is the the plague coming to town. So there's like a, a woman and she's looking across the river and she convinces a man to like piggyback her across. And then he's going to charge her a kiss for that. And then they kiss. But then he's dead and his face is turned yeah. black. And then the villagers get somehow get wind of this, and they decide the best thing to do because it's a woman. Because it's because because the plague is a woman, like is a magical creature, yeah. At Uh, least, yeah. Uh Uh, So it's not like a plague is not a plague. It's a a being that goes around killing. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, but it's like someone has to bring it to town or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Hans's father. It is Hans' father, I'm sure. He's like kind of like a wise... He's kind of got this wise man role he kind of takes on at this moment, I'm sure. Uh, I'll probably... The annoying thing is Hans' father and Rack, Lena's father, they're Looks both quite so similar. similar. They're old Estonian men with Beard big beards. Men, fucking yeah. hell, man. That's black and white. It's not fucking... Jesus. Anyway, so they trick the plague initially by getting their trousers and skirts, putting them over their heads and fooling it into thinking they've got two arses, arses. <laughs> and playing dead. Yeah. And it Although, worked to be, initially. Yeah, to be fair, I, well, I was like, Lena, what the fuck are you doing? Get your head down. <laughs> like, the little, the little looks, little look-ups they do. <laughs> But that was quite a that, that 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 was a weird. I mean, again, a lot of weird moments. Yeah. But um, 
the whole personification and the uh i i think not necessarily saying that that's like an old estonian folktale but that mm. kind of thing of like um in, in times how superstition desperate yeah. people come up with superstition yeah. to protect themselves from the horrible things that go on mm. especially when they're not edu- you know when they're not clued in about things yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um and but it doesn't work forever <laughs> the plague comes back yeah because pig famous no i so famously it sequesters itself as something around the village so they have to find it but then it's very clever the plague because it turns itself into a coin so the man that finds the coin doesn't want to show the coin because it's money and he's poor so he puts it in his mouth lo and behold dies because it was the plague in disguise aha and then yeah it's a pig and they have a confrontation with a pig and the pig's like they, strike, notes. they got that pig to know. They strike a deal, right? Like, um, yeah, leave, uh, leave, leave two, leave two of us, uh, i.e., and they specifically pick out Lena and Hans. Yeah, and then uh, Hans and clearly uh, is like, no, nah, I don't, I don't actually want to be with her, kind of thing, yeah. that kind of energy. But then they all go out in a sort of like celebration that. No, I think they give the pig the old chop. I'm sure still... there's a, yeah. I'm sure their big plan was to sneak up behind it and give it the old. Did I? Did I uh, just miss that one moment? You might have, because I only I was like I think it's more like a sound effect and a brief movement rather. I don't think you see the pig or yeah. anything like that. Um, but it's like it's yeah. apocalypse now style. <laughs> oh Jesus! I mean, yeah, I think that's what happens. Yeah, and then they're like, yay! But then that's when Lena's like, Hans doesn't love me, which is a bit nope. shit. Yeah. So you know. Um, but yeah, see if you're faced with the idea of being one of the two people left to repopulate the village, I would probably not have been like, oh, but with her. I know. <laughs> Trick or not. <laughs> oh, no, I'd rather not. <laughs> no. Can we just Get let our race die? plague, please. <laughs> no. I'd rather, I'd rather it just be the end of the Estonian people than date her. Um, the ghost is pretty cool. The the ghost just kind of so they uh, they start they arrive and they have their dinner and stuff they so it's all of, souls day so yeah. it seems that this is a thing that probably only happens once a year yeah yeah because they do put on food for them when they're starving which i'm sure is you know i'm sure there's a lot to that but i just thought it was nice when uh they allude to something that later happens ghosts when as part of this ghosts go into saunas and then they become big chickens big white chickens you know <laughs> Just what they do. Just what they, they do. They just hang out. They're kind of. I mean, they're they. These two ghost guys are just hanging about. They throw a bit of shade to some beggars. Slap them. <laughs> yeah. And then they wander into the sun and become man sized chickens. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was a real don't fuck with ghosts. They'll like backhand you. Yeah. They're That's they're it. not immu- They're not naive. Yeah. <laughs> They've lived a whole life for fuck's sake. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. there's this. Two, and a bit more. There's this. Lo- there's this like local legend about hidden gold like not gold sorry hidden treasure that lena's family hidden has treasure. and i thought it was the stuff underneath the i i might have just been a reveal might have been the intention but i thought it was the no stuff i thought the it was that at first but then they yeah. were like i heard it's buried around the thing so maybe they had more yeah yeah, I th- I, I, yeah. it's just the, yeah yeah um but yeah it's it's a movie where some stuff happens <laughs> fuck you <off. laughs> what I sense the tone of that. <laughs> well, Donny, uh, since I think it's a art movie, do you know what that means? <laughs> Theme corner. <laughs> I revamped it for this week. What do you think? Brilliant. 10 out of 10. Yeah? Yep. Excellent. High production values. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um... So I actually did look up uh, a little bit of the history of Estonia. Estonia. Oh. And so it looks like around the time where this movie is set, Mm -hmm. there was a lot of power in Baltic Germans Mm. and not like, you know, Estonian, like, you know, 
blooded Estonians. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and there was a lot of resentment in that. Yeah. So I, I feel it's one of those... And actually, when I found that out later, like, a lot of that kind of made more sense of, like, just in terms of this is clearly someone's vision of tying in, like, a really specific time in their history that, like... I'm not gonna like. I don't know everything that happened in the 19th century in Scotland. So mm. why would every Estonian know what happened? You know that kind of thing. That you know they've they've clearly got a love for that time or learning about that time mm. or you know that like it, it is very specific because it didn't last a long time. Um, and then on top of that, you've got. I mean, a lot of different, like, themes in terms of, you know, love and uh, mm. acceptance and des- desperation as a huge, huge, yeah. both in terms of these people starving, both, uh, and then both main characters are starving for attention from these other people, mm. like, and, yeah, it's... It, I don't think it's a it, it, it is a very very staunchly Estonian movie and makes no and and that's kind of what the movie's about mm. and it could be like I, I mean I, again a lo- it's only just what I can take from it mm-hmm. of being just off of a world stage mm. it's being proud of who you are like even if you're not in the limelight but what can come with that and then you know you've got the all 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 of the poor people in this movie are estonian and all the rich people are and and uh, you know as you're saying it's a, a very uh technologically advanced country so no is that yeah no, yeah. so yeah, is that is that is that kind of a play on how far they've come and, mm. but yeah, I, I it's a movie full of theme, yeah, uh, and it is a movie that will get picked apart for years, um, and, and that's definitely where it tweaks into like art for art house movie art, and that's not I, I, again that's kind of a both a, a good thing and a bad thing in my books, um. In terms of how I thought the movie was, mm. I, wait, did I this enjoy? This is theme corner. You, you, you can't yeah, review no, and I'm it moving theme corner. Oh, I can. Is... Rev- I'm moving into reviews, Donald. Okay, Allow so things is... to happen naturally. No, but you have a theme. But you've got theme music for theme corner, and you've got the end theme music for theme corner. You do. You do. You always, do, have you to always do, do okay. every week. Where am I? I don't know where I am okay. now. Okay. Do the end okay. theme music. Go on. Ba ba da ba da ba ba da ba boom. Theme Corner. Theme Corner was brought to you by Green Geico. Giant. Green Giant. <laughs> no. <laughs> theme Corner. <laughs> Review time. Review time. So, like, looking at it as an art movie um, is both a blessing, or or me seeing it as a, an, an art movie is both kind of a, bl- a blessing and a, a disparagement, and it's mainly just because it, it's not what I go to movies for. It's it, it's not where I spend. It, it, yeah, it's not where what I come to cinema for, um, and it just goes a bit too far on that. Um, the, the slim plot and the themes are pushed heavy and it's a lot of it's o- more visual than it is it, it's more about pushing that visual theme forward rather than uh telling it through a story with visual elements um and i struggle with that just it's it, like i it, and it was a movie that i appreciated but struggled with um and in it was clearly a a very very specific vision from the creator mm-hmm. but it was but it's something i can't get on board with like personally i'm nodding sagely yeah 
<laughs> I think he would just say I'm not a. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, we, how did you, I was I was also I was genuinely um, <laughs> curious of what your thoughts would be because you know you have a history of really not liking arty movies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Luckily, luckily this isn't an art movie, so I can like. It, I just I honestly can. <laughs> It's mental that you're like, oh, it's a totally normal movie. No, it's not totally normal, but I think it's... It's... It's in black and white, for God's sake. Yeah, but I think, I honestly, I genuinely think it's flirting with art house, but isn't art house. I genuinely, not to, I'm not, you know, I'm not a contrarian. I just genuinely, you know, I think think it's uh, toes that line finely, because I don't have the patience for art, art house a lot of the time as... Alistair has said so um I mean it looks so nice I mean I, I'm not I'm not disagreeing though I'm not yeah. I'm it is it is very visual um it looks so fucking nice it's yeah it's shot so nicely it's lit yeah. so nicely it's composed yeah. so nicely Absolutely. I wish I'd seen it in the cinema actually because it looks oh so my God. nice and that's and that's again where like I struggled with it uh, because Go to I enjoyed art gallery. <laughs> I enjoyed all those aspects of it. Yeah, I'm surprised that that's not enough. To be honest, I genuinely, I genuinely think that you could get away if you really liked films. I genuinely, well, thought that you could get away with just looking at it as something nice, even if oh. you weren't really feeling it. What it had to give out. Do you know what I mean? I thought it would get you over the line, kind of like, all right, this is fucking hokum. That's not what I think. I'm just saying. I, I, I think the, I think the issue is it, it, it spends an awful lot of its time setting its scene. Like, a lot of time setting its scene. And I felt that that just... Um, it pushed it over the line the, the other way for me. Not, not, not in terms of me thinking it was a bad movie at all. Mm. And again, it's it was just personal enjoyment. It was a movie I wanted to love, mm. but it just didn't click with me. Mm. And that's fine. That's like, that's not to say it doesn't deserve every bit of praise that uh, it would would or would not get. It is, it is a very well made movie. Uh, and there's no uh, argument there from me in that mm. aspect. It's just that as a personal watching it, as yeah. a as a person watching it, it just didn't click to me enjoying it. This feels like your cremator. That's what this feels like. Remember when I didn't like cremator? It's supposed to yeah. be amazing, and you liked it. Nah, yeah. I didn't like it. Anyway, so yeah, I mean, it looks really nice. It's really unusual as you know f- as a viewing experience like for most people it's very unusual it's but uh, it's just let's t- take the visuals get out of the way like i i think it's got enough uh, it's got enough story for me it's got enough like it is a bit bonkers i mean it is a bit bonkers it's bonkers and that's enjoyable to me like there is stuff that, i mean like you said there's stuff that makes you laugh out loud it's horror in the loosest sense really the horrific i mean most of the horror is the crat stuff right at the beginning that could set you up and make you think that this film's going to be something totally different because it is we- that's kind of possum like that crat stuff <laughs> at the beginning and then it totally kind of doesn't it moves away from that like you know the, they- the horror it is is the uh willy wonka's tunnel horror uh, yeah <laughs> and genuinely you know that like that is genuinely disturbing to me even as an adult that is i a, a scene that was horrifying in a movie that is meant to, that is dark in yeah. general but that that specific scene has such a thing and that yeah. seems the kind of horror that this is yeah yeah um yeah i just uh i honestly think i, I would probably recommend it to people who at least have a bit of experience of slightly odd films i'm talking pretty weird stuff right this isn't i mean this came out 2017 so you know the this isn't like a fucking blockbuster success but if you're a fan of weird genre cinema definitely
definitely give this a go. Or if you're just a fan of cinema and want to see something well made. Some of those shots were, I looked. At, I was looking up after just a wee bit, and uh, some of those shots were infrared, and I was trying to think back and see, I'd figure out which ones were. I thought it was uh, the ones at the end. I thought it was the ones at the end, but then there was other ones that had a certain quality, and I was like, I wonder. The one at the end, yes, the one next to the pond for sure. Mm-hmm. I actually wondered if the stuff at the start had a bit of that, and that's why it looked so odd, because it does look mm-hmm. odd. It's very striking. There's a lot of striking imagery in this, mm-hmm. and not just nice stuff going on. Um, yeah, I just, uh, yeah, dug it, man. Dug it. Mm-hmm. Dug that shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> also, the no, Baron was uh, the guy from the first Human Centipede movie. Remember that guy? the Oops. centipede maker not like the third yeah. link in the chain or something like not, that not the asian man <laughs> wow you remember that movie way better than i do christ yeah two women and an asian man <laughs> yeah so I, yeah, speak I, dug English. It. I dug it i dug it yeah and i mean if any of those scenes that we described sound appealing to you you should definitely watch this because it fucking goes places watch our first five minutes regardless oh yeah yeah um, it's kind of sad because it, it's definitely better. I mean, we couldn't, <laughs> we can't have spoiler warnings for the first five minutes of a film. But going yeah. into that cold was quite the trip. <laughs> quite the mood when that little thing took off. Woo! <laughs> right. Other films to watch. So definitely, I think this is my one of my strongest other films to watch. Erementari. Have you ever heard of Erementari? I have. It's a Netflix joint, so that's probably why it rings a faint bell. It's also known as Erementari, The Blacksmith and the Devil. It's a Basque language, period, dark comedy horror that deals with a demon (laughs) and idiosyncratic, and that's probably the wrong use of that word, like lore-heavy stuff. And it's... uh, about a blacksmith that's captured a demon and he's torturing it but it's got part it's got like humorous bits it's also steeped in culture and it goes places it's as if that is if you liked this film you will probably like erementari it's not as nicely shot they're not the fucking same film so it's not as nicely shot and it i think it's maybe a bit funnier but it is, it's it's also weird as hell. It's very good. You should probably watch it. Although you shouldn't because you didn't like November. So fuck you. But uh, people that listen that like November should watch it. <laughs> oh dear. I'm sure and it was the... Estonia. What? And visit Estonia. <laughs> I think it might have been the first film released in the basque language i'm not 100 percent on that but i think that's why what got me interested in it originally and then i watched it cold and i was like wow that is quite the fucking film that is so weird so yeah erementari i would maybe say uh just going on one of our other movies uh hagazusa yeah um i feel kind of strikes a, a more uh watchable tone Oh, you fucking bastard! I'm joking. Honestly. <laughs> no, uh, it strikes. Uh, you know, it, it, it's got a bit more plot to it. It's um, but still got a lot of very striking imagery, kind of along the same lines thematically, uh, but from a di- just a different country's per- perspective. I'm just gonna check and see what yeah, I your... rated Hagazusa. I'm just curious. I don't remember liking it that much. I gave it a seven. I did like it. <laughs> Watch Hagazusa. Well, I have good news and I've got bad news. I would like the good news first, please. The bad news is... Oh, for fuck's sake. I sold your soul for a crat. The good news is he's going to drive us... Great. Is he made out of something perishable like snow? No, uh, titanium. Several, several. Uh, I used the rest of the soap. Oh, great! Yeah. How long does soap last? Oh, I guess we'll find out. Why are you eating it? <laughs> no, no, it's just. Mm. Do you want some? We'll see you all next week. Mm. Oh. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>